Welcome back. So I've been talking about the Laplace transform and how this generalizes the notion of a Fourier transform to a much larger class of systems. And now I'm gonna show you how you can use the Laplace transform to turn a system of ordinary differential equations into a much simpler algebraic system of equations. This is uh, really cool that you can essentially take a kind of college differential equation problem and turn it into a high school algebra problem just using the Laplace transform. All right, so the example I'm going to work on, uh, we're going to look at the spring mass damper system because this is a really fun, easy system to work with, and it's very intuitive. We kind of know what the physics uh, of this system should behave as. Okay, so we have a mass M, uh, we have a spring with spring constant K, and a damper uh, with some damping coefficient C. And what we care about is the position X of this mass uh, away from equilibrium. So at rest will be x equals zero, and if we pull this mass over out of equilibrium and let it go, we're gonna see it oscillate and eventually damp or die out and go back to zero because of this damping coefficient. Okay, and the differential equation for this system is quite simple to write down. Uh, we can write this down as uh, x double dot plus uh, c over m x dot plus uh, k over m x equals zero, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're gonna take the Laplace transform of this differential equation, we're gonna turn it from an ordinary differential equation, a second order ordinary differential equation, into uh, an algebraic equation in terms of the Laplace variable. So remember, uh, dot means time derivative, so this is a velocity, the velocity of x and the acceleration of x, and this formula is just a statement of Newton's second law of motion. Force equals mass times acceleration. So this is acceleration, if I move these masses over, this would be mass times acceleration, and these would be the forces from the damper and from the spring. So this is just Newton's second law written as a differential equation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, for simplicity, I'm going to assume that C and K and M are positive integers to make my life a lot easier. So I'm going to assume that my actual differential equation is X double dot plus five X dot plus four X equals zero. So I'm going to assume that my mass is one, C is five, and K is four. And that's gonna make everything a lot easier. I'm also going to assume that I have initial conditions because I can't solve the system without initial conditions. So I'm also going to assume that uh, I know x at time zero and x dot at time zero. And I'm going to assume that those are two and minus five. And so what that means is that uh, x zero being two means I pull this two units over in the positive direction, and x dot equals minus five means that I start it with an initial velocity, so I kind of kick it in that direction with a velocity of minus five. So I pull it over here, and then I kick it with a velocity of minus five, and that's my initial condition that starts this thing ringing and oscillating. And so those of you who know about ordinary differential equations, I'm assuming most of you, know that uh, the eigenvalues of this system are going to determine kind of how the system responds to this initial condition. And I'm probably gonna get things like exponential functions or sines and cosines depending on k and c. Now in this case, k is pretty large, uh, so I'm assuming I might, guess, I, I might not have any uh, oscillations, this thing might just uh, be over damped and go right back to the to the starting point. Okay, good. So let's see. Um, now what we're going to do is we are going to Laplace transform this basic uh, equation of motion. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do do here. So I'm going to Laplace transform this equation, uh, and I'm going to start with the Laplace transform of x double dot. So the Laplace transform of x double dot. And I wrote down all of my formulas here that we derived last time. So um, this is this in blue is just the Laplace transform. In red is the Laplace transform of a first derivative. You get S times the Laplace transform of F minus the initial condition. And in green, we have the Laplace transform of the second derivative, X double dot, or F double dot, is S squared times the Laplace transform minus S times my initial condition minus my initial velocity. So here, just plug in x's for f's, and that's what we're gonna do here. So the Laplace transform of x double dot is um, s squared 
x bar, I'm going to use bar for my Laplace variable, minus s times x naught minus x dot naught. Okay, that's exactly what I wrote here, but with x's instead of f's uh, for my time derivative. So that is the Laplace transform of the first term. Now I need the Laplace transform of the second term and the third term, so I'm going to write that out. Uh, plus, and I'm going to have 5 times the Laplace transform of x dot is going to be s x bar minus uh, x naught. I hope that's right. s x bar minus x naught, good. That's this term, plus 4 times x bar, and that whole thing equals 0. So what I've done is I've taken the Laplace transform, uh, this is 5 times the Laplace transform of x dot, and this is 4 times the Laplace transform of x. Okay, so I've just literally taken this equation and Laplace transformed every single term. Now this is super cool. Notice that in this expression here, I have no more derivatives. All that I have are x bars, which is the Laplace transform of you know, x bar is just the Laplace transform of x of t, my solution. So I, I want to take my solution, Laplace transform it, and then I can go back and forth. So I have x bars, I have initial conditions, and I have polyno <coughs> polynomials in x, in, in s. So I've taken my differential equation, and it's turned into an algebraic equation, or a polynomial in s. So all of my derivatives turned into polynomials in s. And if I had an x triple dot or an x quadruple dot, I would have an s cubed or an s to the fourth. And so this allows you to take very, very complex differential equations and turn them into relatively simple polynomials in s. Okay, so now let's go through and actually solve uh, this system of equations using this simplified Laplace transform uh, notation. And I'm just going to say this is like the Laplace transform implies this equation is true. Good. Okay, uh, so what do I want to do? I'm going to collect all of my x bar terms. So I'm going to collect, uh, yeah, collect x bar. And so I have an s squared plus 5s plus 4 all times x bar of s. Okay, so the only terms that have an x bar of s that have my actual solution are this s squared, 5s, and 4. So now this is all of my terms that have my x bar. And I'm going to have all of the other terms that have these initial conditions. I'm going to uh, move those over to the right-hand side. So now I'm going to have, uh, how do I want to collect these? I'm going to collect these like, um, now I have s times x naught, and x naught is just 2, so I have 2s uh, plus a minus 5, minus 5, and I'm going to add 5x naught over, so plus, sorry, so this is minus 10, so it becomes plus 10 over here. Good, and I hope I did this right. Uh, there's always a chance I didn't, but this whole thing equals um, 2s plus 5. Good. So now this is really cool. What have I done? I Laplace transformed my differential equation, and I have a bunch of terms that are in terms of x bar and a bunch of terms that are in terms of my initial conditions. I collect all of my x bars on one side and all of my initial condition terms on the other. So let me just make a little under bar. These are all of my uh, initial conditions. And you'll notice that this polynomial here, this polynomial is the characteristic polynomial of this differential equation. So my second derivative became an s squared, plus 5 first derivative became plus 5s, plus 4x became plus 4x bar. And so my, my differential equation, remember if you plugged in e to the lambda t, you would get this polynomial in lambda, and that would tell you what the eigenvalues or the solutions are. So this is the characteristic polynomial of uh, this, this polynomial, this poly in S is the characteristic, uh, characteristic poly of our ODE. 
And that's really, really useful, okay? So now what we are gonna do is we're going to divide this polynomial on both sides to solve for x bar. Because we eventually want, like what I want at the end of this differential equation is x of t equals something. I wanna know what the position is in time. That's the solution of my differential equation. So I'm gonna solve for x bar, and then I'm gonna inverse Laplace transform. Good. So uh, I'm gonna solve for x bar, inverse Laplace transform. So x bar of s equals this polynomial here, 2s plus five over my characteristic polynomial, s squared plus five s plus four, okay? Now, now you might be wondering, how do I inverse Laplace transform this function? Well, we do have a nice little formula here, I'm just gonna extend this, that the, um, the Laplace transform of e to the a t equals one over s minus a, okay? So if we have one over s minus a, we know that the inverse Laplace transform is e to the a t. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use partial fractions to split this function into the sum of two functions that look like this, where there's only a monomial in the denominator. And so I'm gonna write this as uh, 2s plus five over, and I'm gonna split this polynomial. I, I chose those numbers because it's easy to do. This is s plus four times s plus one. If you multiply those out, you get this polynomial. Now, for those of you who know differential equations, you'll recognize that the eigenvalues of this, the solutions of this characteristic polynomial are minus four and minus one, so that's, that's good. And now I can write this as, um, what is this? I mean, I chose really easy numbers, so this ends up being one over s plus four plus one over s plus one. And you can verify that if you cross multiply these, you get uh, 2s plus 5 over this expression here. So that is true. If you didn't know, if, if I didn't make an easy problem, what you would do is you would call this a and b, and you would solve for a and b so that when you cross multiplied, you recovered 2s plus 5. That's how you do this in general for partial fractions. But I chose easy initial conditions, and easy k and c so that this all works out to be integers. Okay, good. And now I have the sum of two easy functions that I know how to inverse Laplace transform. And because the Laplace transform is a linear operator, just like the Fourier transform is a linear operator, really important, it means that the inverse Laplace transform of this sum is the sum of each of the individual inverse Laplace transforms. So I inverse Laplace transform this, and I inverse Laplace transform that, and I get x of t equals the inverse Laplace transform of one over s plus four, which is e to the minus four t. Remember, a here is minus four, so minus four t, plus e to the minus one t, and that, is the solution of the differential equation using, that's the worst star I've ever drawn, using the Laplace transform. All right, let's take a step back and let's summarize what we did. So I've told you that the Laplace transform takes three years off of an advanced math problem, and in this case, we took our ordinary differential equation, and when we Laplace transform it, we get an algebraic equation in terms of polynomials of s. So every derivative of x becomes a higher order polynomial of s, and so you get this expression, and this is super nice. Remember when you solve differential equations, you would first solve for the general solution, e to the lambda t plus e to the lambda 2t, and then then you would solve for the coefficients that satisfy the initial conditions. This handles it all at once, because when you Laplace transform this equation, the initial conditions are in, in that Laplace transform. So when I collect my x bar terms, the Laplace transform of my solution, I get my characteristic polynomial, and on the right hand side, I get terms that come from my initial conditions. And so when I solve this system using uh, partial fractions and inverse Laplace transform, I get the coefficients that satisfy these initial conditions for free, automatically. Very, very cool. Okay, excellent. 
Um, fun fact about Laplace, I always think this is cool. Laplace is just such a fascinating character. You should definitely read about him. Uh, brilliant mathematician. His name's on the Eiffel Tower. First time I saw it, it blew me away uh, that the French revere their mathematicians so. Um, Laplace was the first person that I'm aware of that unified the idea of least squares regression that Legendre came up with and the idea of Gaussian probability, probability a la Gauss. And so kind of bringing those together to think of least squares as a probabilistic regression uh, is due to Laplace. He also proved the first central limit theorem in statistics, which is the cornerstone uh, of, of statistics and kind of the law of large numbers. Okay, so really important character, Laplace. And in addition to having transformative impact in probability, he also showed us how to generalize the Fourier transform to make ordinary differential equations much, much simpler. Okay, last parting thought. Let's see if I can do this without ruining my board too much. Is that if this function had some external forcing, so instead of just looking at the free response where I look at just, just the natural dynamics, if this was plus, uh, let's say this equaled some forcing u of t, so I was actively forcing the system with some external forcing u of t, then when I Laplace transform, this uh, zero would become a u bar of s, I would just Laplace transform my forcing, then I would have my initial conditions um, plus u bar, so I'd have a plus, you know, my control, or forcing, so this is how this also is useful for control, is that you might externally force the system to make it behave a certain way with some u of t that you decide on. In that case, we would call this a control. And so then basically the, the, you do the same thing. You divide by your characteristic polynomial, you get your initial condition response, plus, uh, let me see if I can do this without ruining the board, plus u bar over s squared plus 5 s plus 4. Now this is a little harder to inverse Laplace transform this expression here. You would, you would basically have to do the same partial fraction trick for 1 over s squared plus 5 s plus 4, and then you would take the inverse Laplace transform of that and take the convolution integral with the inverse Laplace transform of u. So I'll talk more about this later, but what I really want to get across here is that this system allows you to simultaneously capture the natural dynamics from the differential equation, from f equals ma, that's captured here in this characteristic polynomial. The initial conditions are naturally captured in these initial conditions when you do this Laplace transform here. And the effect of control or forcing can also be naturally incorporated in the right-hand side, and that just gives you another plus convolution integral term here. So really powerful framework to solve differential equations with initial conditions, with external forcing, all in this kind of unified framework, all in terms of algebraic equations using the Laplace transform. Super cool. Thank you.